deal with divine openings. We've taken care of Mother's Day, we've taken care of College Day. And by the way, if you wasn't with us on last Sunday for the uh, 1045 service, we honor all of our graduates and thank God we have two scholarship recipients. And a young man and a young lady who received one thousand dollar scholarships. I believe it was on that. Fifteen hundred dollars. Yeah, fifteen hundred. Two, two of those. So they got fifteen hundred dollars apiece. And I think that's praiseworthy. Yeah. Thank you for your work. I want to deal with divine openings. Let's go back to Luke chapter twenty-four. Luke chapter twenty-four. Because I'm giving you the first opening, and the first opening was the what? Oh, okay. First opening was the what? All right, it's like that. Open the door. Open the door. I can't do this. Just hold on. Don't no, get out of this. Just hold on. Take out your pencil and paper. I'm going to give you a quiz, and I want you to put your name on it because I'm going to break it to you. Know. It's the what? It's the tune. That's right. The first opening was the tune. I heard it. I heard it. Don't oh, come up here. I heard it. Y'all see that preacher that she said, wait a minute, I said it. Whoa, come up here. I got the other hand now. Whoa. All right, first opening is the tune. Thank you. Let's pray. Eternal gracious Father, we're so thankful for the day, thankful for this spirit of joy that we sense in this place. I thank you for all the worship that we're going up before you today. May it be a sweet smell and savor right to you. Now anything in our lives that's not pleasing to you, Lord, just of it right now. Anything in this atmosphere that is not like you, we cast it down right now. And every high thing that will exalt itself against the knowledge of God, and you bring it to captivity every heart to the obedience of Christ. Thank you for healings and deliverance and all the divine openings that you've given us right now in this day of time. We give you praise and thanksgiving for Jesus. Now remove me from self even the selfness of this day. Hide us behind the cross. Use us as your proclaimer. Let the words of our mouth and meditations of our hearts be acceptable in our sight. For Lord, our strength and our redeemer. You be exalted in this place today. Speak, Lord, for thy servant here today. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody give the thunder say amen. 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 First opening was the two. How many of y'all know that was a divine opening? Yeah. For him to open the tomb was a divine opening. I shared a couple of things with you the last time that we were together, before we celebrated Mother's Day and before we celebrated the uh, the uh, college day. I shared a couple of things with you in our Luke chapter 24, and uh, we dealt with verses 24 and 25. Today I want to move into verses 26 and 27. Amen? Verses 26 and 27. So if you turn to Luke chapter 24, if you're already there, say amen. amen. Let's deal with verses 26 and 27. Let's read them together. I'll tell you what we'll do. I'll tell you what we'll do. Put in verse 25 as well. Do verse 25, 26, 27. Let's read them together. Then he said unto them, O fools, and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Now the reason he calls them slow of heart is because of what? They were slow to believe what the prophets had told them. He calls them fools and slow of heart because they did not believe what the prophets had told them. Amen? Amen. Listen to that. Verse number 26, let's read it. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? 27. And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. Amen? The things concerning himself. So here's what I want to do. I want to immediately give you the second divine opening. We talked about the tomb. That was the first divine opening on Resurrection Sunday. Second divine opening is that he opened to them the scriptures. 
the Word of God. Amen. That's the second divine opening is that He opened to them the Scriptures, the Word of God. I mean, if y'all know, that's really a divine opening. Amen. It takes the Spirit of God for us to be able to do what? Understand His Word. That's a divine opening. Listen to what He says here. He says, All my Christ have suffered these things and to enter into His glory. He opens the Scriptures. That's what He's saying here. He opens the Scriptures. He makes it plain to them. God wants us to know His Word and He wants us to have it so that we can understand it. So He makes it plain to us. Now, I hear a whole lot of people say, I don't read this, I don't read that, I don't read this book, I don't read that book, I don't, I don't study this because I don't understand it. How many of y'all know that it's God's will for us to understand His Word? Amen. He wants us to understand it. He wants us to get it. Even if you've got to get some commentary. Even if you've got to study some other notes, even if you've got to look into some other things, it is God's will that we have a plain understanding of His Word. And He goes all the way back, He begins in Moses and all of the prophets, and then He expounds unto them in all of the Scriptures the things concerning Himself. Now, notice this, because Luke points it out, make it very plain, that He goes all the way back and He begins with Moses and the prophets. <clears throat> Old Testament. A lot of people say we're living in the New Testament age. So they don't, they don't bother the Old Testament because we're in the New Testament church, New Testament age, and so I don't do a whole lot of deals with the Old Testament. How many of you know that if we didn't have an Old Testament, there would be no New Testament? So you cannot separate the two. Both of them are important. All 66 books from Genesis to Revelation, my brothers and sisters, are important. A lot of things you may not understand, but in the Old Testament, Old Testament points us to everything that's going to be fulfilled in the what? In the New Testament. Y'all agree with that? You go back and study what the prophet says, study what God gave men back then, how he dealt with men, and prophets of those back then, and it points to everything that is fulfilled in the New Testament. So you can't separate the two. We're just living in Bible days, period. Amen. But he goes all the way back and he begins to talk to them about Moses and the prophets. Now, here's what happens here. The reason he does that is because Moses and the prophets had already spoken of him in the Old Testament. So he goes back to talk about the things that they talked about, that they dealt with. Now you've got to remember, he's walking with these two men after the resurrection on the Emmaus road and they didn't even know who they were walking with. See, let me throw that in there because they they're walking with Jesus, talking about the resurrection, what took place a few days ago, and you've got to understand that he now goes back because they don't know who they're walking with, and he takes them all the way back and talk about the things that Moses and the prophets talked about concerning himself. Amen? Amen. Now, listen to this. Listen to this. They talked about his death. They talked about his resurrection, and he was simply saying to them that all of these things had fulfilled the prophecies of the things that they prophesied about. Everything that y'all heard, everything you studied, Jesus was saying, it has now been fulfilled. Amen. 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 Now, I don't know about you, but I would have loved to have been there that evening yeah. when he was walking with these two men yeah. on the mayor's road. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I would have loved to have been a fly on the wall listening to Jesus on that evening as he was talking to them and they didn't even know who they were talking to. That's just like sometimes in the church and out of their time. He shows up, we don't even know who's here. He's speaking and we don't even know he's talking. I don't even try to come to this pulpit if I don't have nothing from the Lord. I just sit down and take a seat and ask somebody else if you got a word from the Lord. I wouldn't even try to get up and talk to you. I wouldn't even try to get them to say anything if I had not studied God's word, heard from the Lord, and dealt with some things that God wanted me to deal with. I had to apologize to Son and Ken this morning. I was late getting here to the church. And you all know I'm not a late pastor. But I was late getting here because the Lord was still dealing with me this morning on some prophecies and some revelations of some things that he was revealing to me for this afternoon at another church. But he, but he was dealing with me and did not turn me loose until I knew God. 
deal and get with the Lord, God will tell you some things. He'll talk with you. He'll encourage your heart. He'll say some things to you. He'll give you some direction. He'll show you the way he wants you to go. He'll show you the people he's going to send you to. And when he's sending, you won't have to conjure up nothing. He'll already have his word. And how many know God said it? He's going to bring you to That's why when we read, we need to read 
did with the praying spirit so that the Lord would help us understand divine of what he's trying to open to us. It is essential that you have faith in what you're reading. If you don't have faith in what the word of God says, how many of you know you're never believing it will never become a reality to you? If you think this is just some book that was written by the white man to keep us in slavery, you will be sad and mistaken. It is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes. First to the Jews and also to the Gentiles. This is the power of God right here. To everyone that believes. Faith comes by what? And hearing comes by the word of God. That's why some of us will never build a strong faith because we won't get into the word. My faith is strong enough to ask this sister right here to pray for me. If my faith is strong enough for me to ask her on a consistent basis to pray for me, why can't I conjure up enough faith to pray for myself, taking God at his foot, at his word? If my faith is strong enough to run to this son right here and ask him to lay hands on me every time something gets wrong, then I will conjure up enough faith and build my own faith by reading and studying and meditating on the word. But the son is know what's wrong, I can lay hands on myself. If my faith is strong enough to run down the task every time I got a problem and ask him to pray me through because he's got strong faith, how do you think my faith got strong? Amen. How the church operates. 
how the church thing works. Then you have spiritual knowledge. Now spiritual knowledge is our knowledge of God and Jesus Christ. Technical knowledge tells me how this church works. Technical is But well, how many of you know you step into another knowledge when you step into spiritual knowledge? That goes beyond how the church works. It talks about how the Holy Spirit works in the church. Help us God. <laughs> But spiritual knowledge says he laid hands on his brother. And did you see him get up and walk? Yeah. Uh, that tells me how Jesus Christ and the Word works. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. See, technical knowledge is what have you arguing back with folk about how the church operates. Uh, I ain't concerned about that. Well, I am concerned about it. I take that back. I am concerned about it. But not to the point that it overrides what Jesus is doing in this church. Because he says, the fuck this part, I feel my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. When you get spiritual knowledge, spiritual knowledge will tell you how the Holy Spirit works, and many times the Holy Spirit overrides what's on the program or on the bulletin so he can do some supernatural things that you didn't know was going to happen in here. That's why some folks say, I went to church, and something happened to me, I just can't even explain it. Now, I can explain what happened in the church. You 
feeling her? Oh, what? That's my admin. She's feeling me these days. That's why I keep me a notepad. I write stuff down so that we get back to me because I got to process it. I got to process something. Something don't, does not require an immediate action. You need to process it. Think it over. Think it through. So you have to live there. So that's process knowledge. All right. Last and finally, here's the fourth thing. Y'all buckle your seatbelt. <laughs> buckle your seatbelt, because here I come. The fourth knowledge that I came up with is people knowledge. Ooh. That's nothing that you process. Knowledge. Now, what is people knowledge? Not as bad as you think. What is people knowledge? People knowledge involves working with others. People knowledge involves working with others. What do I mean by that? Sometimes it calls for resolving conflicts. On the flip side of that, sometimes it calls for motivating other people. And I bless God with everything in the church in a conflict. And I pity those who are always in conflict. Hear me real good. Some people are always, every time they say they're in conflict, they're battling about something. They're battling with something. When will we ever come to the point that we'll become motivated of each other? The word says, I'm a shop of them. We need to be busy in the body of Christ motivating each other rather than always trying to resolve conflict. Because if some of us would stay in our own lane, we wouldn't have to always be resolved. Different today than they did 
three years ago. And I said, wow, they're growing in the Word. Not process knowledge, not technical knowledge, but what? Spiritual knowledge. You got it. Let's close this thing. Let's close it. So he opens the scriptures to them. And I think a good place for starters for opening the scriptures and for spiritual knowledge is to start back, as Jesus says, with what Moses and the prophet says. That's why a lot of times when people want to know, what should I start reading? Now I hear some people say this, and let me answer this for you. Some people say this, well, I really want to know God's word. I want to know it better. What question I start reading? I'm a babe in Christ. You don't put a babe in Christ in the book of Revelation, not unless the Lord is <laughs> Not unless the Lord just specifically told you to do it. Where's a good place for stars? Hmm? Yes. All right, y'all process now. <laughs> I tell some folks this because I hear so many people say this. I tell some folks this. I'll people say this. Well, I can understand the Psalms. And I say, what song do you really understand? Well, I understand Psalms 23, that the Lord is my shepherd. So, so you know what I tell them? I can start in Psalm 23. Start with what you understand. And stay there until you get that thing down there. Till you, well, you won't just be saying, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want it. Make it no. Get it in your spirit. The Lord is my shepherd. He will throw you a little hallelujah. I'm telling you, get happy. Get it. The Lord is my shepherd. Woo, I feel that. I shall not want. See, you got to know what you're saying. That's powerful. He makes me to lie down in the green pasture. He leads me beside the still water. Now, if he's going to lead me beside the still water, still water don't have you always upset, trouble, and all.
you did not have your spiritual and divine wisdom and knowledge. And so now we lay hands on every one of our kids and we say, crown us with spiritual knowledge and understanding in Jesus' name and receive it my brothers and sisters right now by faith. Go ahead and bless God in your place.